Hey everybody, it's Partyleet, and today we're taking a look at F1 Manager 2023. Whether you played last year's edition, are intimately familiar with the workings of F1 racing, or are a complete newcomer dipping your toes in for the first time, this video should give you a good idea of things to keep in mind as you dive into your career as a team principal. With timestamps down below to skip around as you wish, let's not waste any more time with an introduction. As they say, it's lights out, and away we go. Planning ahead. With games like this, planning ahead is the key to success. Unless you're playing as a team that's already got a huge advantage for one reason or another, you're going to have to make an active effort to improve your drivers and cars alike. This isn't something that happens overnight though, and depending on the team you're taking on, it might even be a few seasons before you're able to make it into the points, let alone the podium. But that's part of the thrill. When building these plans out, you should take a look at the upcoming race weekends and see exactly which factors are important over the course of the next handful of races. If a particular stat is consistently important for the next little while, it's probably a good idea to focus on improving that sooner, and if a different stat becomes more important further down the calendar, you should mark that down and plan accordingly. Improving these stats comes in a few different ways, but the core of it involves your design and engineering teams. First, your teams need to actually design an improved part, and depending on the part you choose, different aspects of the car will be impacted. You'll further be able to dedicate testing time to each part you're designing, and though you have a limit, it resets fairly often, so make sure you're putting your new parts through their paces. Additional fine-tuning will allow you to balance these benefits, though be wary of pushing too hard one way at the cost of another. You'll eventually end up with options to choose from, swapping parts out as a track needs, but early in your career, you'll still need to build up your arsenal and might need to take a more balanced approach. Also consider the value of durability versus weight. The lighter your car is overall, the faster it can go, but if your parts are all lacking in durability, you'll have to invest a lot more money in manufacturing the same part over and over again, which can hold you back in other aspects. Designing parts takes more or less time based on how many people you want to assign to the task and the intensity with which you want them to work, but keep in mind that a designed part isn't immediately ready to be slapped onto a car. It needs to be manufactured as well. That has an additional time requirement, and you want to make sure to factor that into your equation. Even if the part finishes being manufactured on race weekend, you can get it on the car, but if you're going to miss that deadline, consider your other options. For example, assigning a bunch of engineers to a task is a great way to finish the job faster, but they'll each improve their abilities by a lesser degree as a result. If you're going to miss a race weekend anyway, you could opt to reduce the number of assigned engineers to help them improve a bit faster instead. Apart from your cars, you should take a look at the development plans for your drivers and your pit crews as well. While this is a significantly more long-term thing, improving your drivers and crew over the course of multiple months, telling them what to focus on based on the departments they're currently lacking in, one thing you should be wary of is the fatigue levels on your pit crew. Make sure you're scheduling a bit of rest time before the race weekend, since a tired pit crew is more likely to make mistakes and extend your pit stop times, potentially costing you positions. While we could talk for a lot longer about how to improve your HQ to improve the rate of some of this work, that stuff is pretty self-explanatory in the game, so let's move on to something that can be particularly intimidating for newcomers to the sport. Understanding Tires There are a few different kinds of tires that get used in F1 racing. Broadly speaking, they're split into dry weather tires and wet weather tires. The latter has just two types, intermediates that are used when the track is a little damp from some light rain and you just need a little bit of extra grip, and wets that are for extremely wet weather with heavy rains and puddles on track. These two tire types are extremely durable and can last an entire race without any negative impacts on speed, but if the track starts to dry up, the added grip on these tires is a detriment, reducing lap times significantly. In dry weather, you'll want to use one of the other compounds, ranging from soft to medium to hard. The harder the tire, the more laps it'll last before it starts to impact lap times. As a tire gets worn down, it becomes less performant. On the flip side though, the softer the tire, the better it performs under peak conditions. A soft tire will give you faster lap times than hard tires, but only for so long. Eventually, the wear on the softer tires makes them worse than a harder tire that's been going for the same number of laps. This ultimately determines when exactly and how often during a race you need to pit to swap out your tires. More on that in a bit. First, it's important to keep in mind that tire durability isn't just a matter of time. The same tires don't consistently stop working at the exact same number of laps all the time. Things like brakes locking up or other racing incidents can cause additional tire wear, and beyond that, 
tire temperatures make a very big difference too. Mid-race, you can see tire temperatures for both of your cars and there are two things to look out for. If the temps are in blue, that means the tires are too cold and the car isn't able to drive as fast as it should with properly heated tires. If the temps are in red, that means they're too hot and they're wearing down faster as a result. As I'll explain in a moment, you can use driver orders to maintain good tire temps and while at times you can take risks, tire management is an important part of the game. Expected tire wear is visualized by the reducing performance over time graphs you see when planning strategies and the actual tire wear is displayed as a white line on the same graphic mid-race, showing you how well you've been managing your tires and if you might need to go to the pits sooner than planned or if you've bought yourself some extra time. Switching things on the fly is an option, so let's now discuss pit strategies. First off, it's important to remember that you absolutely must, at a minimum, use two different types of tires in a dry race during the race itself. If it's a wet race, you can stick to just one set of intermediates or wets for the whole thing if you can keep your tires alive, but if it's a dry race, you have to stop and swap for a different type at least once. So, depending on what types of tires are available for that race, you could go soft, soft, medium, you could go soft, hard, you could go medium, hard, or hard, then medium, or you get the point. The idea here is to plan your pit stop around when others might pit, leaving things flexible for incidents during the race. The average pit stop adds about 20 seconds or so to the lap as the car needs to slow down significantly in the pit lane, stop, and then slowly head back out before being able to speed up again. If there's a significant enough crash on the track though, you might see a safety car or a virtual safety car. This will control the pace while the debris is being cleaned up. Pitting under a safety car or virtual safety car technically results in less time lost in the pits because drivers are required to slow down anyway. So this might be a reason to go off strategy and pit a little early. Or let's say you're currently racing behind a few cars and just can't overtake them. The dirty air coming off them is causing your driver trouble or they're battling and slowing you down as a result. Whatever it might be, you might decide to pit so that you can come back out outside of traffic. The hope then becomes to regain your position when those cars pit later on, ideally overtaking them when they're in the pits. Alternatively, if you've done particularly well with managing your tires, you might want to stay out for a little bit longer. Maybe you're holding out for a safety car because it's statistically likely as shown under the circuit details. Maybe you're hoping the person in front of you will pit and give you some space to make up time without battling. It could be a variety of reasons, but it's important to remember that these strategies can change on the fly. When building the strategy to start with, make sure you're not planning on pitting both drivers at the same time. There's only one box for the pit stop to happen in, and double stacking means the second to arrive might have to sit behind his teammate, adding precious seconds to their stop. Otherwise, keep an eye on the estimated total race time. This is hours, minutes, seconds, so on and so forth, so it's a significant difference. This chart is showing you the expected fall off of the tire over time, and this line here is basically the cliff after which it all goes to hell. You pretty much never want to race on tires that have fallen off the cliff, so either plan your strategy accordingly or manage your tires to make them last longer without sacrificing too much lap time. You can go in and check lap times to see the impact of tire wear directly, and naturally, you can expect some variance as a result of a huge number of factors here, but significant increases in lap time during otherwise consistent laps is a very good indicator of trouble coming your way. You can edit strategies on the fly as I've said before, and this is absolutely a good idea to adjust your notifications and visualizations based on evolving scenarios. Did the first few laps of racing cause more wear than you'd expected? Build a new strategy around that, or of course, vice versa. Outside of tire wear and safety cars though, there are additional tactics to apply when choosing when to pit. Undercutting is when you try to pit your driver immediately before the driver in front of them pits. Hypothetically, if you predict this accurately, this means that when the driver that was in front of you pits, your driver will be able to overtake them as they do so because your driver will be on fresher tires that have been properly warmed up. It requires your driver to perform at their best for those laps waiting for that aforementioned adversary to pit, and if your driver gets caught up in traffic or something to that effect, the undercut is quite likely to fail. When pulled off successfully though, it can be the only way for some drivers to come out in front. The overcut is the opposite. Here you have your driver continue racing on worn tires, waiting for the driver in front of them to pit. When that happens, you have your driver push the pedal to the metal and hope they drive their best laps of their lives until it comes time to pit. Again, barring traffic or incidents, your driver will hopefully have created enough of a gap 
such that when they take 20 or so seconds going through the pit lane, they still come out in front of the driver that was previously in front of them. The overcut is a rarely employed strategy because staying out on worn down tires is quite risky. It's hard to get excellent lap times under those conditions, especially considering the adversary here is going to be on fresher tires. The undercut, however, is very frequently employed, but if you're going to pull the trigger on it, make sure you're actually studying where you'll come out of the pits, if you're going to struggle with traffic, and if you'll be able to extend the life of your next set of tires to make up for the adjusted pit timing. Often though, you won't need to rely on these kinds of strategies. Instead, it's all about the man behind the wheel. Building driver confidence. Driver confidence is essential in F1 Manager 2023. When you're barreling down the track at hundreds of kilometers per hour while trying to overtake or defend your position, there's probably a lot on your mind and being nervous is enough to make you hesitate. Improving driver confidence removes that hesitation and ensures a driver is able to keep their head in the game. This can often mean a statistically weaker driver comes out on top. There are a couple types of driver confidences to think about with this year's game. Setup confidence will be familiar to those that played the previous iteration. This is gained by tweaking the car setup during practice, finding the sweet spot for all the settings for either driver based on their driving styles and their cars. Make sure to use your practice sessions to refine these setups as best as you can. Note that you can keep adjusting during qualifying too, but you do not want to make an adjustment after your last lap in qualifying is done. Even if your tweaks stay within the realms of your driver's preference, because that exact setup has been untested, you lose the benefits that would have applied from the setup. That aside, there's driver confidence itself. This is impacted by their performance and is only somewhat in your control, or at least it feels that way. When they overtake or get a fastest lap or otherwise do well, you'll see your driver's confidence climb. If they make mistakes, lose positions, or get into racing incidents, you can see their confidence fall. You might feel like, again, this is largely out of your hands, but between smart pitting and well-timed driver commands, you can get your drivers into situations that allow them to perform better, to overtake, to set faster lap times, so on and so forth, or you can otherwise set them up to avoid mishaps. If, for example, the driver behind them is closing in and you're close to your pit window anyway, maybe just call your driver in so they don't get overtaken, especially if it'll take their confidence down into the red zone. But we've talked about pitting enough. Let's talk about new and old driver commands. As with last year's game, there are a bunch of options on hand for telling your drivers exactly when to push, when to lay off, and how. There are some additional ways in which you can influence your driver's tactics this year though, so keep those in mind as we get further along into this section. First of all, before the race even starts, make sure to take a look at the options available to you. Pushing hard at the start of a race can set the pace for the rest of it. When the cars are bunched up, you've got just as much a chance for overtakes as you do incidents, so play your cards right and you can make a lot of time up nice and early. Either way, make sure your starting commands are set before you head to the grid. Otherwise, during the race itself, you want to primarily focus on these three orders around tires, fuel, and ERS. As you can imagine, being more aggressive on your tires means faster lap times, but also means they'll heat up and start to wear out faster and faster. Keep an eye on the current wear indicated by the white line on this graph versus the strategy you had in mind and adjust accordingly. Remember, pushing hard early here means having worse tires later in the stint, but you can let off on them to have them last just as long. The more laps you spend on worn down tires though, the slower you'll average out, even if you ultimately keep your tires alive for long enough to make it to the pits as planned. Spending 5 to 10 laps with tires that are underperforming to begin with and forcing you to drive conservatively is just asking for slow lap times. Instead, consider going aggressive only when overtaking opportunities present themselves or when defending along a DRS zone where a driver that is less than one second behind you can open their rear wing to gain a little more speed often enough to overtake. Outside of that, consider going aggressive when you're undercutting or overcutting to get that extra wiggle room for when you pit. Beyond that, try not to get too aggressive and remember to conserve if the tires are too hot, allowing them to cool off before returning to a middling level of aggression. Overheated tires wear down more quickly as I've said before, while cold tires don't perform as well as they should, but maintaining the Goldilocks zone can cost you in the short term. It's all a balancing act. When it comes to fuel, Burning it up faster is better since your car will be lighter as it burns fuel. With that said, don't burn too much too early because you might completely run out of fuel before the race finishes, as indicated by the number here going into the negatives. If you go too far into the negatives, you'll have to conserve fuel to ensure you'll be able to actually finish the race, 
but that means slower lap times, potentially losing the advantage you gained by burning so much in the first place. Taking risks here can pay dividends, but make sure you're particularly aggressive at the same times here as you would be with your tires to get just a few more fractions of a second off your lap time. ERS uses battery to give your car a boost in speed, but you only have a limited amount of it and you can only recharge up to half that amount per lap. This boost can make a huge difference between an overtake and a held position. So you want to make sure you're getting your drivers to either focus on just using it all up or recharging it for later use whenever possible. You can also tell them to use ERS tactically for battling purposes as opposed to reduce lap times. This means they'll wisely deploy ERS only when their position is threatened or an overtake is possible, rather than just whenever they can hit a higher top speed. You can also now adjust aggression for overtakes, risking incidents with added aggression, but also increasing the likelihood of an overtake. Playing too defensively, meanwhile, will add to your lap time as your driver takes turns suboptimally, driving to cut off the person behind them rather than simply get the fastest lap times in. This defensive driving is often the only way to hold on to a position though, especially if the car behind them has DRS or is on fresher tires or otherwise managed to drive a cleaner line for a few laps and is rapidly closing the gap. As with everything else, being too aggressive or too defensive comes with risks. Driver commands are an essential part of race day. You can't just sit back and relax. Keep your eyes on what your opponents are doing, stay wary of when they might be pitting, and make note of lap times over time as well as weather reports to best understand when you should be aggressive, in what way, and on what tires. Make sure your drivers and their cars make it to the end of the race in one piece and ideally get them on the podium and have them break Verstappen's first place trophy when they're up there. I hope these tips help you out with F1 Manager 2023 and if they do, consider hitting the like button. If you have any thoughts of your own or questions to ask, fire away in the comments and I'll answer all that I can. Don't hesitate to subscribe for more strategy, sim and tactics gaming with reviews, previews, guides, let's plays and more. And of course, as always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. They'll keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.